Hi, I'm Scott. Today I'm going to show you how to install this tennis ball retracting parking aid in your garage on Dad It Yourself. Okay, so this is my wife's car and it is parked in the garage. And you can see we have these ballers right here that protect our furnace and stuff and how close her car is to that. Well, we've been using this piece of junk from Amazon. It cost me 25 bucks. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. As you just saw from the video, it didn't work. But a lot of times what happens is it turns red about a foot and a half or two feet out from this pole. And no matter what I've done to reset this thing and follow the directions, it doesn't work. And what that does is causes the back of her car to be where the door is. And as you can see, the door goes right here. And this is her bumper. So we've only got about a foot of clearance if she creeps all the way up front. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in an automated tennis ball so she knows when to stop. And we're going to use the garage door to actually manipulate that tennis ball. All right. First thing you need, tennis ball, drill, drill bit, drill hole and ball. hook. Screw the hook into the ball. And this is what we will refer to as the target. Okay? Hooks in the ball. Okay, so two critical dimensions you need to know, and this will make sense in a minute. You need to know the distance between where the ball touches on the windshield and the pivot point up on the ceiling, and then the, the throw of the door, how far the door travels. Okay? So roughly, I'm looking at, and these, these don't have to be exact, they just have to be close right now. I'm looking at about, uh, here we go, 64 inches from the ceiling to the windshield. So the door travel is about 91, maybe 92 inches from fully opened till the door reaches the header down there. So this is where the math comes in. If I had a string that went from here up 64 inches and then down here to the door, if this door traveled 93 inches, I would run out of space as the ball went up and it would hit here at 64 inches and then rip the ball off the string and then the door would travel the remaining 30 inches or so. So how do you do that? Well, this is how you compensate for that. You find that point that's directly above the door and then you go that way to make up the difference. So technically what will happen is the top of the door travels towards the second pivot point. The ball will actually lower in the garage and then it'll start picking back up as the door continues to travel. And what that will do is take up that slack. So it doesn't matter if the ball comes down and then goes back up, the car will be backed out by then. And then when the door is fully closed, the ball will be all the way up and out of the way. And when you're walking across the garage towards that door, you won't be running into the ball. All right, let's put some hooks in the ceiling so that we can see where that ball is going to land and then do the final measure to make sure we have enough slack and then we'll test it for operations. Okay, so the first step is I want to set the first hook in so that this ball hangs directly down right in front of the steering wheel. So it just touches so right there. And so that puts my hook right here. Let me just screw the hook in real quick. There go. What I'm going to do is hook this on there. I'm going to go over this cord. And Here we go. And because my garage door opener is right here, I'm actually going to put another hook out here. And what that's going to do is just 
get it around the garage door before it heads in that direction. There's the ball. The string goes straight up to that hook, then over and down to the door. This is 109 inches. And like we measured earlier, I've only got about 92 inches. So I have to come up 17 inches off the floor. So let me go ahead and tie that up 17 inches off the floor. So, there's the ball sitting right there. That's not where you want it. But if we take the slack out of the ball, which is about, if we did our math correctly, 26 inches, the ball sits right there, right in front of the windshield. Right there, just touches, and that gives us plenty of clearance over here before we hit that bollard. So what I've done is up here in the ceiling, you can't see it, but way back there, I've measured a dot that's 26 inches back. So if I put the hook there and hook the string around it, that will take up the slack. And we can adjust that forward or backwards just to make sure we get our spot right. Let me go ahead and put that hook up there. Okay, call me crazy. I don't know about math, I guess, because there's my mark back there at 26 inches. And here's my hook at about eight inches back from the top of the door. And if you follow the string down, it goes down to there. And what I forgot to take into account was this distance right here. So this plus the eight inches gives me the 27 inches I was thinking I needed. So as you can see, the ball is sitting right on the windshield. The string goes up, comes across, goes across to the slack, we'll call this the slack hook, and then down to the anchor point on the door. Let's check it out and watch it work. This was a super fun project, took me about a half hour and that was slowed down by filming. Anybody could do this, a little bit of extra measurements here and there, and everybody's garage is a little bit unique and everybody's car is a little bit different in size. So if you follow the simple steps that I did in here, you can make this work in your garage too. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, put those down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right over here. Thanks for watching. Daddy yourself.